Texas Tech and the Lubbock community are remembering the sacrifice made by one of the campus's finest a year ago. Coming up, we have a, a look at a special ceremony dedicated to Officer Floyd East Jr. Several campus groups have been hosting a week-long set of events to help students learn more about the Texas Tech community and resources available through the university. Find out more about Pride Week and International Education Week next. And the Texas Tech volleyball team is recovering from a tough loss on the road. MCTV's AD Sarasar Hubaday will be in with a look at that and much more in sports. This is the MCTV Weekday Update. Welcome to the Thursday edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. I'm Berkeley Adams. And I'm Holden Wright. This past Tuesday marked the one-year anniversary of one of the darkest days on Tech campus. That's right, Holden. On October 9, 2017, Officer Floyd East Jr. was killed in the line of duty at the Texas Tech Police Department. Members of the Tech community, law enforcement, and more stopped by Memorial Circle this week to remember one of the university's finest. We looked back one year ago on the tragic death of Officer East and we're reminded certainly of the fragility of human life, but we're also reminded of the way in which a community can come together to support the family of a fallen officer, to support our law enforcement agencies, and to support each other. Even in the worst of times, supporting each other is what Red Raiders do. On October 9th, 2017, Officer Floyd East Jr. rose to the occasion and answered the call for duty. He made the ultimate sacrifice for his community and campus. Officer East embodied our core values at Texas Tech Police Department, which we in law enforcement always try to maintain. Duty, integrity, honor, and service. Floyd was an example of this for his short career in law enforcement, all too short career. The one thing we can take, I think, from this, uh, that at least I have, is that a tragic event can bring us closer together. There was so much um, outpouring of support from the faculty, staff, and students, and community after our loss. And I just want to thank everybody for helping us through a difficult year and, and getting us through this. To the men and women of the Texas Tech Police Department who serve and protect us, we thank you for your service and we recognize the sacrifice that you make to keep us safe each and every day. In times of chaos and crisis, many flee, but you all answer the call. Officer East and his family will live on in our memory he was one of us. He was a Red Raider. Thank you for being here today to honor his memory. Awesome memory of Officer East. The university, in coordination with his family, have established a memorial scholarship in his name. The scholarship will be presented to students studying forensic science or criminology in the sociology department. If you or someone you know would like to make a donation to the scholarship, you can make a donation by visiting crowdfund.give to tech.com. It's been a busy week of events on the Texas Tech campus with two different groups bringing attention to the cause. Throughout the week, several campus organizations have been hosting events for the annual Pride Week celebration. Yesterday, the Office of Risk Intervention and Safety Education gave students a chance to showcase their creativity during the Thai Diversity event held in the sub courtyard. From 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., students were given a white t-shirt and access to a variety of different paints so that they could create their own colorful creation. The colors used are all found in the rainbow flag, also known as the LGBT pride flag. The goal of the event was to bring attention to the LGBTQIA community here on campus. I think it's really cool for people to see self-expression in a variety of different ways. Um, everybody loves to make shirts and tie-dye, and so it's something that people can get behind and say, like, oh, that's for Pride Week? That's really cool. Following the Thai Diversity event, students could wear their shirts to additional events yesterday evening, including the second annual Pride Week Poetry Slam. If you missed out on yesterday's activities, there's still time left to get involved. Just stop by the Center for Campus Life's website at campuslife.ttu.edu and click on LGBTQIA. Just outside the sub, the Office of International Affairs set up shop in the free speech area to help students learn more about international education. The Passport pop-up event was held from 11 a.m. to noon on Wednesday. During the event, representatives from the OIA were available to provide students with information they will need to know if they plan to travel or study abroad. Passers-by also had the chance to grab a passport application and have questions answered about, document, about travel documents. We're trying to promote the passport office because um, a lot of people don't know we are even there. And 
is just, you know, a service that we that Texas Tech offers to students and the public. Along with staff from the Passport Office, a global security specialist was also on hand to offer travel tips and answer questions about international travel. The Passport pop-up was part of the OIA's International Education Week festivities. For more information on studying or traveling abroad, just visit the Office of International Affairs website at international.ttu.edu. The Texas Tech campus has officially become home of dozens of aspiring filmmakers during a two-week event. On Tuesday, the Campus Movie Fest officially launched on campus in the East Student Lounge in the Media and Communications Building. Students lined the hallway outside of the lounge to pick up video and audio equipment that they could use to create their own movie masterpiece. During the launch, students were also given a basic walkthrough of all the equipment, along with forms to fill out to submit their final entries. There was also some swag on hand for participants in the film competition. Students who are creating a film for Campus Movie Fest have between now and next Monday to shoot and edit their movie. Then, next Wednesday, the Campus Movie Fest officially comes to a close with a premiere event. During the premiere, the top 16 films will be screened, followed by an award presentation recognizing the winning entries. The premiere event will kick off next Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. in the sub. At 7 p.m., the doors to the Red Raider Ballroom will open, and the show starts at 7.30 p.m. For more info on the Campus Movie Fest, visit campusmoviefest.com. It's been an interesting week of weather here on the South Plains. The week started off very wet, with showers on Monday and Tuesday. And yesterday, we saw one of the coldest mornings of the season so far. That's right, Holden. But the biggest surprises may be headed our way this weekend. Let's take a look at the MCTV forecast. The MCTV tower cam has been showing cloudy skies all day. Those clouds are part of a cold front that moves into the area overnight. And so far, it's kept temperatures around 50 degrees all day. If we're lucky, we might reach the 60 degree mark before sunset, but otherwise we shouldn't see much of a chance throughout the rest of the night. Tomorrow morning, we'll see more of the same as cloudy skies and cold temperatures stick around the area. But late tomorrow afternoon, the clouds will move out for a little while and temperatures will climb back into the mid-70s. But after that, it's time to pull out your sweatshirts and winter coats as some huge cha changes head our way. Starting early Saturday morning, we'll see a storm system enter the area that will stick around until next week. Along with the chance of rain, temperatures will also drop significantly with highs only expected to reach the upper 50s. On Sunday, we'll start to see the biggest changes in the forecast as another cold front moves through the area. We'll start to see breezy winds and an increase in rain chances on Sunday afternoon, followed by a drop in temperatures around sunset. Overnight on Sunday, the Lubbock area will see a, the first freeze of the season with lows expected to drop near 30 degrees. On Monday morning, near freezing temperatures and a chance of rain will make a very cold commute to morning classes. There's even a slight chance of snow flurries before noon. Right now, temperatures are mo on Monday are expected to stay in the low to mid 40s with cloudy skies throughout the day. On Monday night, temperatures again will drop off and we could see another freeze early Tuesday morning. Cooler temperatures will stick around the area again on Tuesday, but luckily we'll see a return of sunshine throughout the day. Tuesday night, should also be slightly warmer with lows expected to stay around 40 degrees. On Wednesday, fall weather should officially set in for good with another day of high in this, highs in the 50s and partly cloudy skies. Looking ahead, we could see another chance of rain before the end of the next week along with a slight rebound of temperatures by the weekend. After a surprising start to the season, the women's volleyball team faced a tough loss to TCU last week. So could the Red Raiders get back on track on the road in Norman? MCTV's AD Sarupade has a look at the game and more in sports. AD? Thanks, Berkeley and Holden. Having gone through a relatively quiet weekend, Tech fans were crestfallen with the women's volleyball team's loss against Oklahoma on Wednesday. The Red Raiders started off well with a convincing first set lead, only to succumb to the brilliant team effort by Oklahoma. Oklahoma did not give up after dropping set one and would go on to finish the game 3-1. Sooner senior Alyssa Enneking finished with 21 kills on .463 hitting and added 13 digs to help Oklahoma to its 16th straight win over Tech in Norman. Junior Emily Hill led Tech with 13 kills and 12 digs for her 7th double-double of the year and 26th of her career. She was joined in double figure by senior Katie Keenan and freshman Brooke Kanas. Unfortunately, in a desperate attempt to register their first win in Norman since 2002, the Red Raiders were unable to break the jinx. Tech will look to regroup Saturday when it returns home to face Kansas at 1 p.m. on Pink Tea. And for Red Raider football fans, the wait is over. Tech returns to action against TCU on tonight at 6.30 p.m.
you can watch the game on ESPN. In other sports news, Habib Nurmagomedov crushed Conor McGregor in UFC 229 held October 6th at the T-Mobile Arena in Nevada. The Irishman submitted to the Russian in fourth round to fall short in his bid to win the lightweight championship at UFC 229. Not only did the Eagle defend his title, he also got some payback for all the trash McGregor was talking before their fight, which included barbs towards his family, his politics and even his religion. But the aftermath of the fight was the major talking point as Habib leapt into the crowd to trigger a brawl between the two camps. Conor McGregor was also attacked by two of Habib's teammates during the melee and was eventually escorted out of the arena in Las Vegas. In response to his loss against the undefeated UFC lightweight champion, Conor tweeted, We lost the match but won the battle. The war goes on. After his crushing loss to Habib, McGregor has demanded a rematch, but pundits of the sport have conflicting opinions about McGregor's wish. To add insult to injury, the UFC has suspended McGregor till November 6. In the world of soccer, 30 Ballon d'Or nominees have been announced. This year's winner will be revealed at a ceremony in Paris on December 3, when the Women's Award will be presented for the first time. Although the nominees look great on paper, Soccer pundits and fans have raised questions behind Benzema, Mandzukic and Gareth Bale's nomination. Since 2008, the award has been shared between Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo, with the pair picking up five apiece. But with Luka Modric winning FIFA the best this September, chances are that the Ronaldo-Messi duopoly might come to an end. That's all for today's sports segment. Back to you, Holden. Thanks, AD. With the Red Raiders playing tonight, there's no football game in town this weekend. But there's still a full schedule of events happening between now and next week. Let's take a look at the MCTV events calendar. Tomorrow night, the Presidential Lecture and Performance Series kicks off its 13th season with a special panel discussion about climate change. The panel will be headed by Catherine Hayhoe, the Director of Tech's Climate, climate Science Center. The rest of the panel will include leaders from the fields of conventional energy, clean energy, and free market policy. Tomorrow night's event is scheduled for 7 p.m. in the sub Allen Theater, and it's free to all students. All this week, several campus groups have taken the time to highlight the diversity of the Texas Tech campus during Pride Week. And tomorrow, the celebration wraps up with one of the most popular events of the year. Glamour and fame, Texas Tech's Pride Week drag pageant will take place at Club Luxure starting at 7 p.m. This year's pageant will feature National Showgirl Supreme 2018 Dana Class as MC, along with special guest Tiffany Hunter. Hunter was named Miss Continental in 2015. Tomorrow night's event will feature a drag competition with contestants from Texas Tech, the Lubbock area, and beyond. Tickets for the drag pageant are available online for $5 for a general admission, $20 for a VIP pass. You can also get the tickets at the door for $8. For more information and to buy tickets before you go, visit pflaglubbock.org and click on Special Events. And on Saturday, the Office of International Affairs wraps up International Education Week with Culture Fest 2018. The annual event celebrates the various cultures and people that make up the international community here at Texas Tech. Culture Fest 2018 will feature various events, including international music and dance, arts projects, and food and family culture activities. Saturday's event kicks off at 11 a.m. In the, in the, at the International Cultural Center, and it's free and open to the public. So Holden, do you have any plans for the weekend? I think I might head back to my hometown. That's awesome. That's all for today's edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. Thanks so much for joining us and be sure to check out ttuhub.net every day for more news. We'll see you next week.